you're fit to be the mountain king in the world of Hammer King! Oh, I really don't think I'm the man for the job. Welcome to the next episode of my Minecraft review series. Today we are taking a look at a new... <clears throat> exciting game release and let me tell you this thing is really really fun we speak of none other than hammer thing don't let the rhyming and charming dwarves fool you there is a war upon us and you yes you are the key to the victory plus your dwarves need someone to babysit them can't imagine this bunch surviving on their own hammer thing is a 2d colony management game with rpg elements to it set in overworld where a great war between the dread horde and the league of methods rages on while well, you crawl into the mines of Mount Mara to get some shiny stones for your grand halls. Compared to similar titles that instantly pop in mind like Craft the World and Diggles, this game feels a lot snappier and overall more pleasant to interact with. The graphics, at least from my point of view, are better than those in Craft the World, this one really depends on your preference, but I really dig this art style. The gameplay of these three titles is more or less very similar, as in all three you are in charge of a dwarf colony, depending on anyone who would stand in your way. Although the actual fighting part is handled better in both Craft of the World and Diggles. And so is the colony management part as of right now. But you have to keep in mind that Hammer Tank is very early in development. Therefore there is still a lot of time to improve on all the aspects of the game. Still, even in its current state the game is very enjoyable and I believe that its strongest points right now are exploration and base building. To which I'm gonna come back a little later on. Generally, this game plays out as a mix of both Craft the World with its exploration and resource hoarding and Diggles with a distinct goal to achieve. In this game, there will be supplying armies of the overworld in the ongoing war. This title might be a little overwhelming at first, but once you devote a little while to it, you'll find out that it's pretty relaxing and visually pleasing experience. As already mentioned before, there are different aspects to the game, the most prominent right now being exploration. The map is rather sizable and comparing it to Craft the World I feel like it's at least 4 times as big, especially vertically. The map borders are signified by the equivalent of bedrock on all sides aptly called cornerstone and within these borders there is a number of different biomes procedurally generated every game. With the only certainty of you spawning in the default biome and with the fire underground being at the bottom of the map. With the random gen being thrown into the mix you already have a lot of replayability to begin with. Just like the map itself, all the monster nests and resources are randomly spread across the map as well, leaving you with a different experience every time. The main goal of this game is very much tied to the resources uh, you will be mining, as you will be supplying the whole overworld with a plethora of different items. Either gladiator swords for the horde or a couple of egg heads for the nearby lumber mill. All these supplying quests, just like the rest of the game, are kind of random too. Since all the quests are mostly reoccurring with slightly changed amounts of items required, but there is no particular order in which they appear. Speaking of the quests, there is one thing I'd like to point out and that's the very obvious war profiteering happening. And just to make things clear, I absolutely fucking love it. You do have the option to support the good guys only, if that's what floats your boat, but you could always provide some support beams for the free cursor of the summer ducks, for their <coughs> trading and fishing vessels, to make them float too. When you look at the whole thing from a wider perspective, it would be a mistake to see the world black and white, right? To speak a little more about the questline, there are currently 23 points of interest on the map belonging to either of the factions. They constantly try to seize more land and whenever they do, they'll likely need some supplies. And that's when we come into the picture. We are indirectly responsible for a resolution of every single skirmish, by either supplying the League of Methods or not. But enough of this, I really need to mention some stuff. Now, if you take a look on the world map, as you can see, uh, I cannot unsee one thing whenever I open a map like this. I see Lord of the Rings parallels all around the place. I can pretty clearly see the black land here. We have the Barad Dur here. We have the fortress of Melkor here. Uh, Engbad? Angba? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just gonna butcher all the names. We have Harad here, we have uh, Rune here. Uh, Minas Morgul, Ambar, uh, Osgiliath, I don't know, Shar probably, uh, Rohan, we have the Blue Mountains, we have the uh, remnants of Arnor up here, uh, you can call this Erebor or something, and overall this thing very much reminds me of a Lord of the Rings, not that it's important, but you won't be able to unsee it now, no need to thank me, 
Now, there obviously remains the colony management portion of all this, and quite frankly, as of right now, there is not a lot to speak of. There are several stats for you to care about, but all of them can be taken care of by having enough coin, food and ale. So after you get a steady supply of those, you don't really have to pay any more attention to them. Each dwarf has its attributes, traits and skills, helping him to specialize in a certain profession and giving him various buffs. Traits are randomized, but the skills of the dwarves are something you can pick for yourself making a dwarf specialized in things such as smithing or slaying foes. I don't think the latter has a decent implementation as of right now, but I believe that's the change. The combat right now is something I would rather not talk about. The formula to successfully beating an enemy is either strength in numbers or equipping your guys with weapon of some sorts and hoping for the best. You can't really control the fight too much and sometimes you'll get vibed because one of your dwarves angered a bunch of rats in the beginning of the game. Overall, there is a decent amount of content in the game as is, but we obviously have yet a lot of content to come later on, so I wouldn't worry about it too much right now. Now, let's leave all that mumbo jumbo behind us and move on to something more comprehensible. Pros and cons. Random generation and sandbox, art style and overall fluidity of the game, world building, promising concepts. Now, on the other side we have mobile game like missions, bugs and AI, I'm looking at you elevator and unfinished state of the game. Oh, and I almost forgot. <clears throat> and also, also, all these asterisks right there are here to signify that all these are likely a subject to change and therefore they should be taken with a grain of salt. Learn more about this a little later. The base price of the game is 24.99 euros and the biggest sale so far was 20% off at 19.99 euros on Steam. Now. Before I give you my final verdict on the game, I'd just like to mention some stuff. As already mentioned in the beginning, this game is very early in development, and as such you're obviously kind of investing, so to speak, when you buy it. Since you can't possibly know in which direction will the game go, and whether you'll like the changes that will be implemented. There is of course the official roadmap, which as I mentioned in the pros looks very promising, and a lot of the cons mentioned could be as well fixed on the road to the full release. But right now. A lot of the content is a foundation, a strong one, but foundation nonetheless. A lot of stuff is missing and a lot of things already in place are still waiting to get finalized or properly implemented yet. That said, the developers seem to be very active, adding new things and most importantly trying to fix all the arising bugs. Although you have to enable the experimental beta branch to experience all this. As the official version of the game is at the time of making this, uh, 0.1.3.3 and the beta branch is on 0.1.4.18. Finally, my verdict. Hammerting has a lot of potential and I do believe in the developers to make this game as good as it can possibly get. I would recommend every 2D colony management enthusiast to give this game a shot. The price seems justified, although if you want to be absolutely sure that your money will give you a complete game, look elsewhere for the time being. Take from that what you will, uh, I personally love the game and I am looking forward to its future. If you want to support the idea this game has, make sure to check it out on the Steam and buy it to support its development. This will be all for me today, hope you enjoyed this episode of Mild Quarter Review, check out the rest, consider leaving a like or a subscribe to see more and have a good one.